I'm not going to agree to a deal that protects wealthy tax sheets and crypto traders while putting food assistance at risk for nearly 100, well, excuse me, nearly 1 million Americans. That protects wealthy tax sheets and crypto traders. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that was Biden. Those were some of the last words that he left uh, before he got on his plane to return back from Japan in the G7 summit. He was speaking to the point that protecting crypto traders was not going to be part of anything he would sign in order to raise the debt ceiling. All right, we're going to go to the most important thing, and that is Attorney John Deaton found something that didn't stand out in a footnote in a brief, and it's part of an exhibit 220 of an SEC email where XRP is mentioned, and wait for it here. There are reasonable grounds XRP doesn't satisfy all Howie factors. And John says this is huge. It's right here. There are reasonable grounds to conclude that XRP does not satisfy all the elements of a Howie analysis and is therefore not a security. Two and a half years, 200 million in legal fees, and taxpayers, all the wasted money. Absolutely, this lawsuit was used as a weapon. Gary Gensler taught a class at MIT on Bitcoin. He's probably the single best regulator in the entire world. You could, if, you, if God came down and picked the perfect person to run the SEC, you couldn't get a better person than Gary Gensler. If you go Google it, you'll find that the MIT Open Courseware has his 24-session course on cryptocurrency uploaded, available for you to watch. If you want to know what the SEC thinks about Bitcoin, watch Gary Gensler teach. I happen to have good relationships with MIT's Digital Currency Initiative. I'm, I'm a, a supporter of it. Oh, wow. I contribute to it. I, yeah. I, you know, I give them a million dollars. And, uh, and I asked them before, before the Biden transition took place, I said, what do you think? They said, well, you know, Gary Gensler is on the transition team and he's really pro Bitcoin. So if he gets uh, a role, that'll be good. Okay. So everybody likes him. Yes, there was some ridiculous things going on at the Bitcoin conference. This is one of them. And a few people I know were making fun of the Bitcoin developers, Eric and Udi, dressing up as wizards. But this portion of the conference is actually a serious debate discussion about the Bitcoin upgrade that made it possible for the ordinals. That's the BRC20 tokens, which is using up all of that block space and raising transaction fees that are just way too high. And it can't be left alone as is because the fees and congestion are only going to get worse. So this is a, a this is an interesting part of the conference. And if you are interested in the Bitcoin ecosystem, I highly recommend this portion on day one uh, for a quick listen. I'm now going to play a clip for you where the panel discussion was about journalism. And we've got a crypto writer here. He's um, Joe Hall, and he writes for Cointelegraph. And he admits that he's biased and he uh, owns it. And so I just I just think you need to understand when you read any article in this space or listen to anybody doing content, always be skeptical and, yeah, don't believe 100 percent because there are a lot of agendas. And it's interesting that when I posted this on Twitter, I had a couple of people that said that I am biased when it comes to Stellar and XLM. And boy, I try not to. Be. I really try to approach the crypto space with neutrality. But what I have been searching for is a, a, a solid use case that Stellar is using outside of just having XLM secure the network. That, that it does a great job, as Danell says, it, it is uh, really doing its job in securing the network. But they have moved to using USDC as their bridge in their payment solution. And the IBM deal is long, long, long uh, 
dead. It, it was disbanded years ago. And it, there's a really good chance that Stellar is going to uh, actively promote XLM in the new smart contracts capabilities. That would be wonderful. I would love to see XLM used in a DeFi solution. So I'm not saying that it won't happen or it can't happen or, you know, but as of right now, <laughs> I, I, if you have a proof without a shadow of a doubt that Stellar, the foundation, is using XLM in a solution that is being promoted for a use case outside of just securing the network, I'd love to see it. Um, so just because I'm searching for that doesn't mean I'm casting a shadow. I just, um, looking for use cases, that's it. And I know that it does a fantastic job securing the network, just like the digital asset XRP secures the XRP ledger. Um, but I also know that there's a lot of, uh, use case, uh, being driven home with ODL. And I think we're going to see. Uh, something happened with CBDCs, as I discussed in the video yesterday. And I also think there's a, a good chance that once regular uh, regulatory clarity is there, it will be added to the liquidity hub. And with their coming of tokenization, um, I think we're going to see just a lot more activity on the ledger. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just always focused on utility, everyone, honestly. So please know that. And uh, okay, have a listen to this clip. Uh, Joe, being in the Bitcoin space and a journalist in the Bitcoin space, I was very curious how you personally balance your bias. Uh, you know, obviously there's a big financial incentive and bias within Bitcoin. And how do you balance your bias as a journalist uh, and communicate that to your readers and, and viewers that, uh, you know, yes, I invest in Bitcoin, but uh, I'm going to tell the truth regardless and, uh, you know, do the right thing. What bias? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, also the idea of being uh, invested in Bitcoin, I, I got the instructions wrong and I'm just only half Bitcoin. Um, but I make that very clear on all my sort of social media profiles. And, you know, I, I go by the pseudonym Joe Nakamoto. And Yoli Nakamoto, well, the, the, the Nakamoto that this room knows is obviously Satoshi Nakamoto. So it's very evident that I'm obviously a Bitcoin advocate, Bitcoin believer. And I think that's OK to have, you know, these these biases because everyone has a bias regardless of where you come from. It's a question of being aware of it and understanding, OK, where's that coming from? So I guess personally, um, the readership, you know, I'm, I obviously work for Cointelegraph, which is a crypto journal. Right. And that, sorry, trigger word, a cryptocurrency <laughs> journal. Um, and inevitably within that space, you know, there's a lot of people that are pro other coins. So I think I have to be even more clear that, you know, right. when you're reading my work or you're watching my reports and documentaries, it's going to have this Bitcoin focus. For sure. And I'm, I guess in a way trying to own that and, you know, show that as well. Totally. Yeah. And that understanding, you know, Bitcoin really is the, the state change here. It really is the revolution. And yeah, yeah. push that forward for sure. Very cool. All right, now just keeping with the conference for one moment, this is George and George runs a channel. He's an OG in the space. Uh, his channel is called Cryptos R Us. Cryptos R Us? Yeah, Cryptos R Us. And he's well known for uh, not liking XRP. And what he did is do a random interview with people that were wandering through the Bitcoin conference and asking them if they like XRP. And I just want to share one uh, one person who I think maybe surprised everyone. Right now. I'll just ask him about I don't know, I don't know if you still have the hate on. Do you? No. Yeah, he just asked me that question. I just asked him. The most successful mines are huge scale operations like this one in the north of Sweden. So this is where you see uh, 25 megawatts of crypto power uh, taking place. How many computers in the whole data center? We have about 100,000 GPUs mining uh, and about 16,000 ASICs mining. Wow. And on 
a daily basis, we mine about one and a half Bitcoin in this facility. All of this for just one and a half Bitcoin a day. One and a half Bitcoin.